The film you are about to see depicts a milestone in the story of the Asiatic black bear, or moon bear. It's the story of over 100 bears and the monumental efforts by one organization to bring them home. I've been involved in promoting animal welfare for many years now. And when I first came across the work of Animals Asia, I was astounded by their work for these beautiful moon bears. I hope that everybody watches this remarkable film and joins me in helping to share their story as far and as wide as possible. Thank you for bearing witness to kindness in action on an unprecedented level. In the early hours of April 19, 2021, in the foothills on the outskirts of Nanning, China, a small group of incredibly dedicated individuals gathered to commence the most challenging operation ever attempted by a bear rescue organization. Transporting 101 endangered Asiatic black bears halfway across China to Animals Asia's Bear Rescue Center in Chengdu. This was the Moon Bear Homecoming. So today's the day. It's the morning that we have been waiting for for eight years now. And I want to thank every single person here and who is not here for being a part of this. Everyone in the past eight years who have been on this journey with us. As China Bear and Vet Team Director Ryan Marcel Sukat briefed his team, he reminded them of the historic nature of this endeavor. So I have in front of me the best team possible. Um, and we will perform this monumental task. B, one and two, and B, five. There was no blueprint for what they were about to do. The sheer scale and logistics of this mammoth move dwarfed any of their previous rescue operations. We're, we're just beyond grateful now that we have this opportunity, and we're so thankful to the Guangxi and Sichuan Forestries and Grassland Administrations to just allow us this opportunity to, to allow the bears a second chance at life. Transporting just one wild animal is fraught with danger. We'll be standing on either side of the cage, just holding. One wrong move, one momentary lapse of concentration, one break from procedure or protocol could spell disaster. A move of this magnitude increased those dangers exponentially. But if there was ever a team that could undertake such a massive mission, <laughs> this was it. <laughs> Animals Asia has rescued over 600 bears across Asia and runs two award-winning bear sanctuaries. They have been looking after the bears on this ex-bile farm since 2014, when the new owner decided he didn't want to be part of an industry that caused these creatures such pain and suffering. So this final journey of 750 miles would mark the end of an eight-year operation to grant these bears the freedom they so desperately deserved. To feel soft ground and grass beneath their paws for possibly the first time in their lives. For some bears, like Barak, the devastating effects of years of bile extraction were plain to see. As the years ticked by, and countless legal hurdles arose, repeatedly delaying the move, the team wondered if Barak would ever actually make it safely to the sanctuary. Even when his allocated time finally arrived, special care had to be taken with Barak. Nearly all the other bears were able to be consciously loaded into transport cages, 
that were set up on scaffolding and securely attached to the fixed farm cages several weeks prior to transport. This gave the bears time to familiarize themselves with the new setup. So when the day came to take them to their new home, they happily and willingly walked into their transport cage of their own volition. Barak's mobility issues, however, meant that he could not negotiate this simple move. The vet team decided they needed to anesthetize him and move him into his own transport cage unconscious. While he was under, they gave him a health check and fitted out his transport cage with layers of luxurious straw bedding for his big journey home to Chengdu. Wait, wait, wait. Yeah, that's her name. Today, the plans of weeks, months, and years of preparation were finally being put in action. The team worked from early morning until late into the night, carefully taking each of these precious bears from their place of incarceration and placing them on the trucks that would take them to their new life of freedom. I need to know where this box is because... By 2 a.m., the team had loaded all 36 bears who were on this first phase of the operation, and the convoy of nine bear trucks rolled out into the night on the long journey home. While the exhausted crew caught a little sleep, the bears were monitored remotely on CCTV by experts around the world, including Animals Asia's founder and CEO, Jill Robinson. Despite being stuck in Hong Kong due to travel restrictions, Jill had been intimately involved with the operation's planning. And, you know, there was the time when we thought last year that it was all going to come together and then COVID happened. But even before that, you know, one permit was given, another permit was refused. After so long caring for these bears, she was overjoyed to see the years of hard work finally come to fruition. Miss you. Miss you more. Bye. At the same time, she was heartbroken not to be there to physically walk the last miles with these bears she had devoted her life to saving. After we stopped, um... Otter was one of the bears that needed constant monitoring. This gentle-natured bear was prone to seizures that left him physically shaken, fearful, and disoriented. The team had to be ready to stop the whole convoy immediately and attend to Otter should anything go wrong. Thankfully, at this stage, he was calmly enjoying the trip. But at 7 a.m. local time, one of the trucks broke down. With 36 bears hundreds of miles from the safety of the sanctuary, a delay like this could drastically increase the chances of something going wrong. And for bears like Barak and Otter, there was no time to lose. To find a solution, the team turned to Animals Asia's founding director, Boris Chow. Boris had been rescuing bears for over 25 years, and experience had taught him that you had to be prepared for anything. He quickly rearranged the schedule so the bears could have their morning feed early, at the same time the truck was being repaired. Every individual bear's meals, medications and enrichments had been prepared in advance to minimize time on the road. The sooner these bears arrived at the sanctuary, the sooner they could access the better facilities and higher level of care they so desperately needed. Soon, they were back on the road, thankfully with minimal delay. There was still nearly 20 hours of travel to go before they would have the bears safely back at the Chengdu Bear Rescue Center. Despite the team's fatigue, their spirits remained high. Many had never been on a rescue before, let alone an undertaking of this magnitude. As night fell and the bears had their last feed on the road, there was a heightened sense of anticipation in the air. Oh I opened 
the road truck and the other one. <laughs> She's a <the> fix man. <laughs> she likes strawberry sauce. They knew the lives of these bears were about to be totally transformed. Just a few more hours and they would be home. The adrenaline made it difficult to sleep. As they crossed into Sichuan province, the excitement was palpable. On the CCTV, they could see the anxious bears had all calmed down. Otter was still sleeping peacefully, and Barak was traveling better than anyone could have hoped for, covered in his mountain of straw. <laughs> At around 5.30 a.m. on April 21st, the moment the team had been waiting for for over eight years finally arrived. The first of the Nanning bears rolled into the Chengdu Bear Rescue Center at Longchao. Um, we have Jen in Australia watching the bears on the CCTV footage and the one bear we've been watching the whole time. She's been so stressed during the journey. She just stopped stereotyping when we parked the truck and Jen said um, she knows she's home. And it's just so exciting. <laughs> so exciting. <laughs> oh, yeah. beginning not only for the bears but for you guys you're gonna have to roll up your sleeves and we're gonna have a full full sanctuary soon so um, I can't I can't picture a more beautiful thought in my head than seeing all the nanning bears throughout the sanctuary we now have the task of getting 36 bears off their trucks and into their forever home at CBRC um, and this is where all of you are gonna play a part the world has been watching you over these last 48 hours and I promise you this none of us can be more proud of you at this time of all of you every okay these bears could now enjoy the life that had been denied them for so long where they had only ever experienced concrete and cages soon they would be roaming outdoors with grass beneath their feet and the sun on their face they could climb and dig and forage and play, finally expressing their natural behaviors as they would in the wild. This homecoming is all the team had dreamed about and worked towards for nearly a decade. Despite all the hardships and heartache, they never once gave up on these bears. Today, their courage, their strength, and their endless empathy have been rewarded, and their tenacity only equaled by these extraordinarily brave bears, like Barak, who have suffered so much, but endured. I don't think any of us really expected him to make it back. <laughs> he is the best bear. This moon bear homecoming reminds us all of the good that we can achieve. And there is no greater force for good than the power of kindness in action.
we, we, we walk the walk, you know. And that's what makes me proud.